In these days of national smoking bans, global recessions and a nanny state that knows best, there's one subsection of society that's feeling the squeeze as hard, if not harder, than any other. The pub landlord. In a working class town like Oldham, the pub has been part of the town's life and personality for generations. But now pubs all over the town are struggling to get by. One such watering hole is Whittles, a pub in the centre of Oldham that specialises in putting on rock shows for its punters. But as the expenses mount up, it's increasingly likely that it will be the business that ends up on the rocks. I'm Keith Lawrence, I'm the manager at Whittles in Oldham. It's uh, Oldham's premier rock venue. Uh, when I first took over here just under five years ago, it was the uh, worst performing pub in the company. It had no live music. We don't charge on the door, so we rely on what people buy over the bar. And the thing is, our trade is down 20-25% on what it was a year, 18 months, two years ago. And what we find is people are coming out later. They're then sipping rather than supping. And if they've got a designated driver, all he wants to do when the band finishes is uh, get in the car and go home so he can raid the drinks cupboard. Here, the money for the bands comes out of the drinks. So when my turnover is down, that means stuff that has been paid for, staff that's been paid for and all the rest of it, the profit that is left is less. So the whole budget um, syndrome is I can't afford to keep paying out if I haven't got the band, uh, the punters coming in to see the bands and, and buy money over the bar. You know, that's the bottom line on it. So what happens? We get a budget, government puts another bloody increase on, doing nothing to help the industry as, at all. The stats are that in the last 10 years, the UK has gone from 46,000 pubs down to 28,000 pubs. And last year they were closing at a rate of somewhere around 50 a week. Uh, this year they reckon it slowed down to about seven or eight a week. Well, if you add that on to the thousands that went last year and people that thought they could survive that haven't survived, you know, I'm lucky I've got a part of a company. If I was a single, uh, you know, a tenant myself, the trading over the last six months, I'd have gone bang. The bank wouldn't have kept bailing me out and all the rest of it. You know, this is a working area. People have had their hours cut, wages frozen, and... Times are hard all round. We have to keep putting the prices up because we get brewery increases, supplier increases, crisps, nuts, everything is going up. And the minute we put something on, we're called robbing bastards. In actual fact, our profit margin is being squeezed and squeezed week in, week out. And there's nothing we can do about it. We have to keep the money coming in. As I say, we're actually running in the first three months of this year at a loss that the company wouldn't like me to uh, give an actual figure out, but I've been running at a loss. The smoking ban was a disaster for the whole of the leisure industry. Uh, Mecca Bingo in Scotland, they had uh, the smoking ban a year before we did in England, and by the end of that year, one third of Mecca Bingo halls had gone under because people can't smoke in there, just not going in. So the smoking ban was ill thought out. Why on earth they couldn't leave it to the landlords to decide? And then, you know, I don't care if I have to put a 12 foot flashing neon sign across the front of the pub saying this is a smoking pub, but let the adults decide whether they want to go in there or not. So it's not just the food o bistros and places like that are suffering. The whole industry is suffering and the government are doing nothing to help us. Next we move further out of the borough to the idyllic surroundings of Saddleworth. Nestled in the hills are many pubs that offer a variety of different dining experiences. Perhaps one of the more popular venues is the Black Lad, which is famous for its hearty English cuisine. But what's the story behind one of the more successful pubs in the area? My name's Angus Wharton. Um, my partner, Amy, she took this on four years ago. Um, and she took it with another partner, but he pulled out after two years. Uh, so I became involved with it with Amy. But Amy's been in it all her life. She's like a chef and a landlady as well. Well, basically, we pay rent every week for the building, uh, and the, the business is ours. 
So we're, we're class of free house. We're not brewery owned. Um, so we can buy our beer and wine and all that spirits off whoever we want. Um, but we are, what we are at the moment is we're tied to the Tetley Carlsberg Brewery. But if we want to end our contract, we can do and go with another one. You know, whoever offers us the, us the best deal. With, when you're in with a brewery, you get high rent, and then you can also put the the um, the, the sales upon the uh, the beers and spirits and wines, so that you're paying like absolute top dollar for it. Um, so if you're a free house, you get it a lot less money. You know what I mean, if you do the food side of it, that's the better side of it. You make money on your food basically. Occasionally, we've had bands on. Um, we used to do a, a jam night where a group of guys used to come up and people just do a jam night here as well. But uh, it became a bit too expensive, really. We used to have to pay them. So uh, we dressed the place. The girls dressed up the place up with all the, the flags and that. Um, and we we put on for a wedding breakfast, but we didn't get that many in. We got we only got about two or three in, really. I'm not 100 percent, but um, I would imagine there was more went in for the drinking side of it. You know, the best I know is the, the food side of it. You know, if you can do decent food, you'll get your customers in. And if the, if it's like we're more of a restaurant than a pub. So we know that like 90 odd percent of our customers coming through the door are either booked or they're coming in for a meal. Do you know what I mean? And we have been on the TripAdvisor, we've been um, number one on the you know, like best restaurants a few times. So it's, you know, as far as we know, our reputation is good like. And uh, people have said like, if we had to move anywhere, we'd let them know because they'd, they'd come where we, you know, where we go to. So hopefully that's the, uh, the way forward, isn't it? Also situated in Saddleworth is the Golden Fleece, a gastro pub with communal ambitions. But being situated in the middle of a long road with few houses can cause problems for the amount of customers the pub can pull into the alcohol side of the business. Hi, I'm Mark Flynn from the Golden Fleece at Denshaw in Saddleworth. People can quite easily drive past it, but nine times out of ten, if they see a sign saying 50% off food or a good offer, they'll turn round either in the lay-by at the top of the road or further up in Denshaw, and they will come back. But the, the car, basically the car parking facilities are absolutely fantastic because there's no on-road parking. The only bit of a problem is to obviously try and get across the road in the busy periods. We, we've actually got this on a 25-year lease, um, which, which is good for us, really, because we've only been in here like 18 months, near enough two years now. Within year, well, start of the second year, we actually won Food Pub of the Year 2010. Um, we are going for another award this year, which will be the uh, National um, Pub Award. So we'll just see how we get on with that. But we are doing other things, like obviously we, we are going to open this village store now. Uh, we've had a meeting quite recently, and we are going to go forward with the village store. And the village store, basically, there's nothing in uh, Denshaw at all. There's no community store at all. Uh, people, the nearest people I can travel to is like Tesco's. Um, Asda or Morrison's, what we want to try and do is try and keep it as local as possible. Use um, very, very local suppliers to obviously facilitate the store itself. We're going to be making the bread side of things, obviously buying convenient stuff so people can walk in the door from 7 o'clock in the morning, uh, buy morning papers, come in and have breakfast at the same time. So it's quite a good thing for the local community. It's trying to bind the local community together more as well. The business itself is escalating. We are doing, you know, everybody says that they're doing absolutely fantastic. Nobody's doing fantastic in this day and age in pubs, stroke restaurants. Um, they're all doing okay. Every day is a new day. Um, every day is just constant evaluation and just seeing the right things to do. Um, but we just progress day by day, week by week. There's more people coming in. There's more word of mouth about the Golden Fleece. So it's just constantly evolving all the time. We have quite a loyal relationship, really, with Punch Taverns. Um, they're OK with us, we're OK with them. Um, at the end of the day, they're a business, they're like us, a business, they're trying to make money. Everybody's trying to make money. I think the big, um, the big point would be when Punch starts selling the pubs, what pubs they are going to sell, um, what dead stock they're going to get rid of. They're looking at getting rid of 500 pubs a year, which is quite a lot. You know, they've probably got say 340 pubs in Oldham alone so if they get rid of all them 340 there's not really that many pubs left you know I know it's going to be all across the country but it's still a lot of pubs to get rid of yeah definitely you can't just be a drink pub now 
you've got to be something else. You've got to be a food pub or you've got to open the doors to something else. That's why we've obviously got the function room that we obviously do um, parties, weddings, private dining, that type of thing for. We offer it as a free function room because we know that if we offer it as a free function room, people are going to come back time and time again. They're not paying for the rooms that they're going to spend on the bar or they're going to spend on the food. So it seems that the traditional working man's pub is dying out, destined to be replaced by gastro pubs, vein pubs and even community stores. It would be easy to blame the government and the breweries for the downfall of our beloved drinking dens, but at the end of the day, when Britain evolves as a country, the industry must evolve with it, or go down with a whimper and a for sale sign above the door.